Welcome to our project. We're team 23 and our project is genre identification. We'll talk about what the project is. The basics of audio analysis is a primer for the rest of our presentation. We'll go through the data methodology, the structure, the training, selection, and results. Our motivation is there's companies out there that need to be able to do genre classification uh, as part of their business. Customers want to be able to sort and find songs by genre. Uh, for our project, we want to know how could, they, how could this be done and how can we do it with a neural network. So our goal was to create a neural network that would do this and achieve performance in line with the published capabilities. Our challenges is number one, we starting this, we didn't know how to do it. So how would it be done? What approaches are there? How do we process these clips? Uh, what data is available? What should we use? How do we structure a neural network to give uh, perform the genre classification? And then how do we get the uh, competitive results that we're looking for? So to understand our uh, uh, project a little better, a couple of slides here about uh, audio features. Relevant features, um, there's over 150 of these. Uh, you can see those listed, listed there. Uh, we picked a few based on what's available and things that are differentiable. And if to go to the next slide, uh, you can see some of these that they are clearly different for different uh, for different genres. So, but use those differentiation features to be able to classify the networks. For data, uh, we use the GitSan uh, genre collection, thousand tracks, uh, 100 songs per genre. Uh, very easy to use. However, short data. So you can see our our uh, tree there. We basically took a thousand clips and turned it into a thousand, ten thousand training samples. 4,000 uh, validation samples and 3,600 test samples using uh, splitting of the, uh, of, the, of the clips. Use Labrosa as the tool for extracting those features. And then from a methodology, we look for a simple approach where we just feed the features into a dense neural network, uh, simple, quick, uh, versus a more uh, complicated model, but one that should be more accurate uh, using a convolutional neural network. All right, so we're looking at our model structures. Um, as Mike mentioned, we trained multiple types of models, and so to be able to compare these models kind of apples to apples, we used a common structure for reading in and predicting on these song clips. The one of the models that we looked at was a very simple dense neural network classifier. It looks at static features, um, which are not time dependent and aggregated over the song clips. It puts those features directly into a dense, dense neural network layer. Um, and just goes through some dense layers before spitting out a genre classification. Nathan will go over the more complex models, which are CNN involved. Yeah, so for uh, these for these architectures, we wanted to capture the sequential information that's embedded in the audio files natively. Um, and so to do that, we did a, a short time Fourier transform to get the spectrogram and feed it through a CNN, which is good with uh, working with spatial data, um, and an RNN, which is good with working for the uh, working with sequential data and deriving meaningful features from them. So we train both of those in parallel on the same spectrogram uh, to get two different output vectors that we then concatenate um, and feed through a final uh, fully connected uh, shallow network to get our genre classification. Uh, and that's what's mentioned in the published work that we looked at, but uh, our contribution was replacing the RNN with a time series CNN uh, to train our networks much faster and um, still capture sequential information and leave the, the feature learning up to the neural networks. All right. So for the dense neural network, um, we looked at a lot of different hyperparameters for tuning. These parameters included um, the architecture optimizer, using dropout and dropout rate, and finally the learning rate. So these, this um, slide shows some of the models that we looked at and analyzed. And the one in green near the bottom is the one that actually performed the best. Very, very simple, just three layers with an atom optimizer. We were kind of having good results with dropout, but ultimately we found that adjusting the learning rate had a better result actually um, for handling the gross overfitting that was occurring with this model. So changing the learning rate and removing dropout actually had the best results. Here are the accuracy and loss curves for this model. Um, very smooth, but you can still see a lot of overfitting. Um, the model, ac uh, the, the validation you can see levels out at around 60%. Um, in literature, human classification is about 70%. So this definitely is not ideal. Luckily, um, the CNNs that Nathan's gonna go over performed a lot better. 
Yep, so th this is the uh, the final hyperparameter configuration that we used for our uh, CNN-based networks uh, in parallel, the CNN time series uh, specifically. Um, we did a random search over hyperparameter space and just yielded the configuration that gave us the, uh, the highest validation accuracy on our data. Looking at some of the results. Um, so we wanted, part of the reason we looked at a DNN was because we wanted to see the trade-off between model complexity and performance. Um, Dense neural networks definitely on the simple side of complexity and it takes the corresponding blow to performance, um, as you can see here with an overall accuracy of 66%. This performance also varies a lot across genres, though overall bad, it's especially bad with some of the genres like disco, which is under 50. Luckily, the CNNs did a lot better. Yep, so we see that the uh, overall test accuracy was actually 86% with the uh, CNN RNN uh, in parallel. Um, which is quite good compared to human, uh, human prediction. And then with our contribution, the CNN and time series CNN in, in parallel, we get just a 5% deficit in the uh, test accuracy after we uh, accumulate all of the, the separated clips back into their original song format. Um, but uh, the benefit here is that uh, training happened much faster. And so it was a pretty good trade off there. Okay, putting it all together, um, our, the, the DNN model was 66% uh, against the reference uh, documentation we talked about was 73%. Uh, our model was a little simpler and the data was a little bit different as far as how much was there for tests. So they were, uh, we think, comparable. For the convolutional network options, uh, we had 81 and 86% versus the gold standard of 92%. Um, Again, the 92%, uh, they had the option of a very high computing power for the uh, recurring neural network, but in general, we were in line with those. And then compared to human classification, we did better with our convolution, convolutional neural network, uh, a little bit less with the dense neural network, but all in all, uh, we feel like our results were in line with, with established benchmarks. Um, next slide, our references for your, uh, anybody who wants to look into this, and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you.